Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Showmont, and I have a rant for you today. But before we jump in, thank you so much. We have crossed 3,000 subscribers, so thank you for your continued support. And for all of you who joined us on our lives this week, especially our live yesterday for our full podcast, thank you all so, so much, because without you, we can't make this possible. Let's jump right on in. Receipts, receipts, receipts. Gino Ariema, you dumb mother effer, you. You said some of the dumbest basura I've heard in my life. Just when I thought only the players of the WNBA and the coaches in the WNBA and the former rejects of the W, not rejects, but former whiny ass players of the WNBA. Just when I thought it was only them who were world-class Caitlin Clark detractors and jealous as hell. In steps Gino Ariema, a man who's supposed to be a damn teacher. You're a college basketball coach. You're supposed to be inspiring. You're supposed to be uplifting. You're supposed to be elevating, pushing the product forward, bigging them up. Instead, Gino Ariema had a number of comments that he made about two months ago that look really freaking stupid right now. And in fact, when he made them, they looked stupid then too. Let me give you just a little taste of what he has said because what he has said is so ungodly foolish. Ungodly foolish. That it's just, you sit here and you're like, you're a basketball coach at the highest level for so many years. This is what you got, bro. This is what you got. So let's take a listen right about now. What do you mean by how she's being guarded or uh, you know, enforced? I think, yeah, I think you and I both know the landscape that we live in today. Both... Um, sports wise and non sports wise right we are in a red blue and if you're red you can't agree with blue and if you're blue you can't agree with red whereas most things are in the middle if you're a college player and you're a great college player like caitlin was the delusional fan base that follows her disrespected the wnba players by saying She's going to go in that league and tear it apart. There were actually odds on what are, like, she's third or fourth in betting odds on being MVP at the WNBA. These people are so disrespectful and so unknowledgeable and so stupid that it gives women's basketball a bad name. My guy, Gino. My guy, Gino. Gino. That's a pretty big receipt, a pretty big check you wrote that makes you look ungodly foolish right now. It makes you real look real, real bad. Because let me tell you something, man. Caitlin Clark right now is number two in the league right now for MVP voting for betting odds. Because she's kicking the shit out of people. Because she's dominating the damn league. So the disrespect that the players may feel. Oh my God, they felt disrespected by the woman who's the all-time leading scorer in collegiate Division I basketball history. Men and women. And you're going to sit here and talk about the disrespect delusional then i'm delusional because i expected exactly what we are seeing she's amazing and you should be ashamed of yourself with that rhetoric that we're delusional how delusional Caitlin clark right now is in the top 20 in every major category in the league there's only three players in the league that are doing that one of them is your former player brianna stewart another is nefisia collar oh another one of your former players and the third one is Caitlin Clark, the girl you wouldn't recruit, you fucking fraud phony. But let's keep on listening to this shit. 
Okay, so the kid was set up for failure right from the beginning. So if you're a double, and I believe me, I've coached the best, and I've pissed. We know, we know you've coached the best. We, we know. You've had loaded-ass teams the duration of your entire career. You've never won a championship with an undermanned squad. Your team is always favored for the last 25 years of my life. You've lost as favorite. You've never won as an underdog that I can remember, but let's keep going. I them off a lot, and they let me know about it. But they were tremendously disrespected. How were they disrespected, Gino? How were they actually disrespected? Caitlin Clark came in with a cult-like following from college. Is it her fault that people are cheering her on? Is it her fault that people like her game? Is it her fault that she has a skill set that not one fucking player in the WNBA has right now? So miss me with the bogus bullshit about how she they're disrespected. No one can shoot like her. No one can pass like her. No one can command the attention defensively that she commands. No one. There's not one singular player in the league being defended the way she is defended. And yet she's still averaging 18, eight and a half, and six. And it's completely changed the course of the Indiana Fever, who've been atrocious for the last six seasons. Well, let's continue. And none of them are going to say it, but human nature is, okay, this kid's coming into the league. And Diana said it best. This kid's in for a rude awakening. And they all jumped over her, but they didn't read the whole thing that she said. But nobody's printing. You know, Diana Taurasi was right. Really? Diana Taurasi was right? What did Caitlin Clark do to Diana Taurasi? Newsflash, Gino. Indiana's 3-0 and against... Phoenix. She busted a triple double on Diana Taurasi's ass. You remember that? Do you remember? What'd she just do last week against Diana Taurasi's ass? 29 and 10? You remember that too? Sorry, 29, 10, and 5? Remember that? Diana Taurasi wasn't right. And you know what Diana Taurasi has done? Diana Taurasi has accepted the fact that Caitlin Clark is that, is that chick. She's her. And I hate using that. He's him thing. I'm him. She's her. And she's seen it on the court now three times. I think she missed one game. But she's seen it personally twice. For which Caitlin Clark lit her ass up. So, no, Diana Taurasi wasn't right. There wasn't a rude awakening. You know what the rude awakening was for Caitlin Clark? Is that she would be defended differently than everyone in the league. College teams did not defend Caitlin Clark the way these WNBA teams have been defending her. The way they've been jump, jump trapping her, blitzing her, all those things. She did have to get used to it. And even as she was getting used to it, the only thing that was impacted in her game was that she turned the ball over too much. But at the same time, she was still averaging 17, 7, 17, 6, and 6 at the time in the first 11 games when they played 11 times in 19 days. A gauntlet schedule against the best teams in the league when she's jumping on the worst freaking team in the league who's got such li so little talent and they don't know how to play together. Remember, she didn't get a break between college and the regular season for the WNBA. She jumped right in from the final four to the draft to the season. That was it. They had yeah, two preseason games. So, yes, there was a slight adjustment period for her to get used to the fact that, holy shit, these, these chicks are going to double team me every time I touch the ball. They're going to guard me 75 feet down the floor when I don't have the ball. They're going to guard me when I'm 40 feet in the rim without the ball. They don't care what happens behind them. They're going to faint guard me. So absolutely, there was a slight adjustment. And as soon as she made the adjustment, she's lighting these motherfuckers up. But let's continue with you, Gino Ariema, because you should be ashamed of yourself. And you sound like a UConn homer, because obviously you're, you're the UConn coach, but you can't see, my God, the praise that you give for your UConn girls. Let's, let's, let's remind you about, let's take a real quick glance at, at Diana Taurasi. Actually, let's continue this first. This kid's on the wrong team. 
She's got the wrong skill set to handle the physicality of that league. And she's a rookie. And if you're a WNBA player, if you're any kind of player, you're going to say, I'm going to make a statement. Targeted, targeted by society. All right, let's stop right here. Rookie. Yeah, she's the rookie. Let's take a look at what Diana Taurasi did as a rookie. Diana Taurasi came out of college, and her rookie season with Phoenix, she averaged 17 points, 4.4 rebounds, and 3.9 assists, and 2.6 turnovers. So she had a less than 2-to-1 assist-to-turnover ratio. She got 41.6% from the field, 33% from three, 76% 76% from the free throw line. Caitlin Clark, right now, is averaging 17.8 points per game. That is more than Diana Taurasi did. And it's only going up. 41.2% from the field. So she's right around there. She's coming close. 32.8 from three. So similar. She's shooting 56% from two. Taurasi shot 46.7% from two. from the free throw line, 5.8 rebounds, 8.3 assists, 1.4 steals. She has a 5.5 turnover, so she has about a one and a half to one assist to turnover ratio, largely because of the beginning of the season. But no excuses, that's what it is. She leads the WNBA in assists. Skill set? The wrong skill set, the wrong team? Well, let me let me let me clue you in. They were one in eight to start the season. And they have since gone 12 and 7 since they got a chance to breathe after those first 11 games in 19 days. So you've got to be freaking kidding me if you're going to sit here talking about a skill set. The wrong team. Let's talk about the wrong team. The Indiana Fever won 13 games last year. 13. They are 13 and 15 right now with 12 games left. The Indiana Fever are probably going to win 20 games. So for the wrong team that she's on, for which she was drafted to, she has turned that franchise around. At this point last year, they were 7-21. and They are six games ahead. They're going to finish with 20 wins, in my opinion. They look fantastic now after the break. They look energized. She looks rejuvenated and refreshed. But let's also take a look at this. Diana Taurasi, as a rookie, finished with the rookie of the year, she won the rookie of the year. She was first team W all of WNBA, and she finished third in MVP voting. So how the fuck are you going to get on here and sit here and tell us that it's disrespectful and rude and whatever other adjective adjective you want to come up with to describe the disrespect of the of the WNBA players that Taylor Clark is on a high level being bet to win rookie of the year? Because I guarantee, you, if you look back, Diana Taurasi probably was as well. Because she did finish first team all WNBA. And there's no doubt in my mind that Caitlin Clark will finish first team all WNBA as well, win the rookie of the year, and will probably finish second, maybe third in MVP voting. She should finish at least second. There's argument to make her the actual MVP, regardless of Asia Wilson, because she has personally, individually changed the future of this franchise. If you take Asia Wilson off the aces, they're still a good team. You take Caitlin Clark off this team, they don't have five wins right now. Every win they got was a close win until the last game. But let's continue. Targeted by her looks, targeted by her reputation, targeted by the disrespect that they've shown to the WNBA. There's a huge target on this kid's back. I thought Cameron Brink said something really smart. She said, no, they're expecting this rookie class to be perfect. This rookie class isn't even one of the best rookie classes in the last 10 years. That's the fucking stupidest shit he said in the entire in the entire thing. And he's done a lot of stupid shit here. But that was the stupidest thing he said. Because I made a point to go check back. Let's go take a look-see. 2014 WNBA draft. Let's go one by one because I, I pulled them all up so I can be prepared. The first pick in the draft in 2014 was Chine Ogumike. The second pick in the draft was Odyssey Sims. She's still in the league. She's bouncing around. Kayla McBride, Alyssa Thomas, Natasha Howard, Stephanie Dolson, Priya Hartley, Shoni Chamel, Natalia Achonwa, Markeisha Gatling, Chelsea Gray, Trisha, Trisha Liston. That's the first 12. That's the first round. It's a good draft. 
It's a good draft. You have players that are still playing right now. A lot of these women are still not are actually not in the league anymore, but there's a bunch of them that are still playing at a high level. Cheney retired. Odyssey Sims is floating around. McBride plays for the, the Lynx. Alyssa Thomas is balling. Natasha Howard's good. Um, Stephanie Dolson, she's okay. 2015. Number one pick is Jewel Lloyd. Would you say Jewel Lloyd's better than Caitlin Clark right now? Fuck no. Amanda Zahui B. I don't even know who that is. Let's see how long she lasted in this league. She's been out of the league since 2015. I'm sorry. 2000. She's been out of the WNBA since 2020. I guess she played for the Fever last year. She's not in the Fever anymore. She's not in the league. Kalina Mosqueda Lewis. That's one of the UConn girls that, 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 that you know, Gino had. Kalina Mosqueda Lewis has been out of the WNBA since 2020. Elizabeth Williams, Cheyenne, Cheyenne Parker, De'Erica Hamby. But then the rest of these ones, no one knows who they are. Kaya Stokes is here, Isabel Harrison. These are, these are okay players. No stars. 2016, Brianna Stewart, Mariah Jefferson, Morgan Tuck. All three of those women went to UConn. Mariah Jefferson is being shipped around like she's, like she's useless now. Mediocre player in the WNBA. Mediocre. That's what she is. She's a mediocre WNBA player. She's a career nine points per game. Okay, amazing. Morgan Tuck. I couldn't even tell you who Morgan Tuck is. Morgan Tuck has not been in the league for four years. Career, I mean, I mean, that was at UConn. Career, career, shoot, I can't even find her WNBA stats here. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't say she was some superstar. Let's see here. Who else? Rachel Bannum. She's with the Chicago Sky now and can't really play. Ariel Powers. John Quell Jones is obviously very good. Kyle Copper is very good. Courtney Williams. The rest of these players are not in the league. 2017. Kelsey Plum is your number one pick. Caitlin Clark's better than her. Alana Coates, Evelyn Akator. Is she in the league? I don't even know who she is. Yes, I am not a WNBA expert, but I know I'm not her. She's been out of the league since 2018, so she lasted, lasted a year in the league. Let's see. Uh, Alicia Gray, Naya Coffey. That's your fifth pick. That's your fifth pick here. She is. She's placed for the dream, it says. Okay. None of these players are, are big time. Brianna Jones. Most of these players are not in the league anymore. This is the first round. I go, I'm go. i going by the first round. 2019, the number one pick is Jackie Young. Caitlin Clark's better than her. Asia Durr, number two. Asia Durr, is she still in the league? She is not in the WNBA anymore. This is 2019. She's not in the league. Tierra McCowan, she's decent. Maybe Lou Samuelson is the fourth pick. She's on Caitlin Clark's team. She fucking sucks. She sucks. If you redrafted this draft, the number one pick would be Arike Agumboale or Nafisa Callier. Jackie Young would be the third pick in the draft. Esme Magabor is, is the 12th pick. Brianna Turner, Kiara Leslie, Christine Ang, whatever, Alana Smith. Nafisa Callier, Arike Agumboale, and Jackie Young are the features of this draft. 2022, Sabrina Ionescu, Satu Sabali, Lauren Cox. Is Lauren Cox even in the league still? Because she was drafted by the Indiana Fever literally two years ago. And she is with the Connecticut. She's out of the league. She's out of the league. She played one game last year at the Connecticut Sun. She's out of the league. Kennedy Carter. Kennedy Carter had her problems. She was out of the league in two years, back in the league. She's doing fine now. The fifth pick is Abella Alari. Like I said, I'm not an expert on all the players. She's not in the league. She was in the league for two years. Makaya Herbert Harrigan. This is the sixth pick. I know there was a draft that I looked at that. Basically, like, 75% of the first-round picks were not in the league in, like, the last four years. It's a hard league to stay in. I, I, I acknowledge that. It's a hard league to stay in. But let's miss the bullshit here, okay? 2021, the first pick in the draft is Charlie Collier. Charlie Collier. Charlie Collier. I think this might be the draft. She's not in the league, dude. She's the number one pick in the draft two years ago. She's not in the league. A walk... Four of the top five picks in 2020, 2021 are out of the WNBA. Charlie Collier, Awak Kuyer, Aria McDonald, Kaiser Gondrasek, and Chelsea Dungy. 
Four of those five are not in the WNBA today. Today. These are facts. You're telling me this draft class is not one of the best in the last 10 years, you fucking clown? Bro, stop. 2022. Number one pick is Ryan Howard. Number two is Nalissa Smith. You see what Nalissa Smith is. She's completely mediocre. Shakira Austin. Shakira Austin's the third pick. She's not in the league anymore. Third pick in the draft literally freaking two years ago. Not in the league. Emily Engsler. I don't know who that is. I, like I said, I'm not an expert on the WNBA. She plays for the Mystics. She's been on three teams in three years. That's how – see, think about that. You're the third pick in the – fourth pick in the draft. You've been on the Fever, the team that drafted you. They got rid of you. You went to the Minnesota Lynx. They got rid of you. And now you're in the Washington Mystics. And you average a career 4.3 points per game. You suck. Like, you're not good. Nayara Sabali. That's the other Sabali sister. Lexi Hall was the sixth pick. Veronica Burton. Maya Hollingshed. Ray Burrell. Queen Egbo. Kristen Bell. Nia Cloud. Okay. 2023. Aaliyah Boston. Diamond Miller. Maddie Seacrest. Stephanie Suarez. Stephanie Suarez is not even in the WNBA. She's the fourth pick of the draft a year ago. A year ago. She's on the lead. A year ago. One year ago, she is not in the league. Out of the league in a year. Out of the league in one year. Or if she is, she doesn't play because I can't find anything on her. No stats. Lou Lopez Senchal. She's the fifth pick of that draft. She plays for the Wings. Or she went to UConn as a as a fifth year transfer. Haley Jones, Grace, Grace Berger can't get off the bench. Like, can't get off the bench. Leticia, I'm here. Jordan Horston, Zaya Cook, Abby. Ma like, come on, man. Give me, a, give me a break, dude. Right now, right now, the 2024 WNBA draft, six of the first seven picks are starters. Six of the first seven picks are starters. And if you want to go even deeper, J.C. Sheldon, who was the fifth pick, has started half of the games this year for the Dallas Wings. Every one of those women are producing right now. Caitlin Clark, Cameron Brink got hurt, but she was a starter. Camilla Cardoso, Rakia Jackson, J.C. Sheldon, Aaliyah Edwards, Angel Reese, all of them are starters. Those are the first seven picks of the 2024 draft. Not to mention they bring eyes. They have personality that brings eyes. People are watching them, large part because of Clark. But they all have their individual followings as well. Clark is the is the headline attraction. Caitlin Clark is the best number one pick the WNBA has seen over the last decade, including Brianna Stewart, who has the personality of a doorknob and who has a game that no one cares about because when she came in, she brought no fans. You think that's the one of the the not, not the not even close to the one that being the best drafts of the last decade? You're out of your freaking mind, Gino. You're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. Literally, the 20, the 2020 draft, it was a 2020, 21 draft. They don't have an all-star in the draft in the first round. Most of these people aren't even in the league. Two of the two rookies are all-stars as rookies. Let's keep going. But they've been put out to be that because the way social media is today. So what kind of impact is this rookie? Get the fuck out of here. Social media is not why Caitlin Clark is who she is. Caitlin Clark led the country in scoring and assists in college. That's not because of social media. That's because what she did. Angel Reese averaged 19 and 14 in college. She won a national championship. Cam Brink is a first-team All-American. It's not because of what social media did. It's because of what they did. Camilla Cardoso led the South Carolina Gamecocks to a national championship three months ago. It's not because of what social media did. Are you that fucking bitter 
that Caitlin Clark beat you in the national semifinal in the final four? Are you that bitter? Dude, come on, bro. Class having in the WNBA. How do, how do you think Clark is handling this? I think she's handling great. I think she talks a lot of and she gets a lot of back. So she deserves everything she gets because she gives it as good as she gets. I got no problem with her talking shit. I got a problem with people taking cheap shots because she doesn't cheap shot people defensively. She doesn't cheap shot people. They have been cheap shotting her, Gino. There's a massive difference. She gets forearm clubbed across the face. She gets chucked in the back on an out of balance play when the ball's not even in play yet, purposefully. She gets shoved in the back by Skylar Diggins Smith literally two days ago, three days ago, whatever it was. Whatever that was. She gets shoved in the back because she's pumping her own crowd up. She, there, she is being cheap shotted. Angel Reese forearm clubbed her across the face. You're not talking about the same thing. Shit talking and her shit talking level, bro. Cop, Copper wants to fight her every time she's on the floor. Are you watching? Are you watching? Because when Kelsey Mitchell filed Cal Copper, Cal Copper didn't do anything. When Caitlin Clark did, Kyle Kyle Copper acted like she wanted to fight. This isn't, this is different, dude. And you know it. That's it. She's just not built for the physicality of this league. Oh, here we go. Physicality again. You dumb motherfucker, you. 18, eight and a half, and six. 18, eight and a half, and six. And then over the last month, she's averaging 25 and 12. Broke the WNBA record for assists in the game, 19. Not built for it. Did you see what she did to Jewel Lloyd and Kyle Copper in these first two games back from the break? Did you see it? She went right through them. She just bodied right through their asses. Those two, three extra pounds of muscle she got in the break from lifting some weights, she barreled their asses over, man. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Yeah, and she's not quick enough to get away from the physicality. Not quick enough. Yeah, you know what? You're right. She's not quick enough yet. You know, she's just going to go right through their asses. And that's what she's doing. She's going right through their asses. She's not quick enough. You're right. I agree with that. She's, she doesn't have that quick first step. You know what she's got? She has the, the, the vision. She has the ability to shake their asses off the dribble. And you know what she's doing now? She's just throwing her fucking shoulder right in their chest. Do something about it, motherfucker. So there's a lot of learning curve, like Diana said. And when she gets it, she has elite skills that are going to really help her. When she gets it, brother, she's got better numbers than Diana Taurasi right now. Yeah, but she needs to be on a better. She needs to be on a better team, and she needs to be more experienced, and that will come. But for these, a better team, she made the team better. Again, what are you talking about? She made the team better. She's the reason the team is better. That's like saying LeBron James needed to go to a better team to start winning in Cleveland. He went to the finals in Cleveland in his first go round. He they won they won sixty plus games multiple times in Cleveland. That was a trash can dumpster fire of a franchise. The player makes the franchise better. What are you like? Sorry, did you know this isn't college? This isn't you recruit the ten best girls and have ten McDonald's All Americans the way you had when you played. Iowa with their one McDonald's All-American, Caitlin Clark, and she beats you. She beats your team. One McDonald's All-American against eight to ten McDonald's All-Americans, national players of the year on your team. Come on, dude. Ridiculous fans who had her slotted as the next Diana now. They're out of She's better than Diana now. Your mind. And, and for these people that are waiting outside the bus, for the Chicago Sky team. Yeah. What the hell is wrong? What do we become? A third world soccer country? That, that, that when a soccer player gives up their own goal in the World Cup, you're waiting for him in a bar to shoot him? Like what the hell are you talking about? You mean because a media member or or, or or fans are waiting inside of a bus? They literally been begging for that. They've been begging for the opportunity to have people give a shit about their sport. Good or bad. NBA players have been dealing with that shit forever. And now you're mad because people are questioning when you body chuck someone like a freaking dirt bag in, in a game, in a dead ball situation, that you're going to get questioned on? No one's coming there to shoot anybody. What the hell are you talking about? This isn't freaking Columbia in 1996 or whatever it was when 
when when they put their own goal against the U.S. in the World Cup? What are you talking about? What the hell are we doing here? Yeah. Uh, when Paige Becker said she was coming back, you said what? I said I knew that. She's having too good a time here. Her impact here is so great. Her impact nationally is great. And she doesn't want to be known as the greatest player ever to play at UConn without winning a national championship. Sorry, Gino, but she will be. Sorry, Gino, but she will be. Unless you have recruited a whole bunch of players to put around her, she's going to be the best UConn player to not win a national championship. She had her chance. She didn't get it done. And unfortunately for her, unless you have loaded your squad and gotten some transfers who are ready to go now, not freshmen, but transfers who are ready to go right now. And I don't know the answer. I don't know if he has or not. South Carolina's stacked. They're always going to be stacked. I hope you loaded up on your roster because I don't, you don't have Aaliyah Edwards next year. She's gone. And I think Paige Beckers is great. I think Paige Beckers is great. I think she's fabulous. I think she's a great, great player. But she doesn't have the she doesn't have the weapons around her, and I remind her that every day. <laughs> <laughs> Does she have the build to play in the WNBA? No. Okay. But her game is different. Her game is different than Caitlin's, in that she's more of a, just a distributor. Get the ball. You know. Her game is more like Sue Bird's game. That's what going with Pinga, man. You're full of shit, bro. You're full of shit, dude. You just, <laughs> like, did this man really just sit here and say, did he really just sit here and say that she's more of a distributor? Caitlin Clark led the nation in assists in college last year. Going, yo, I can't stomach this shit. Paige Beckers, for her career, averages 4.5 assists at UConn. She averaged 3.8 assists last season. What? Her game is like Sue Bird's. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. But Caitlin Clark's leading the WNBA in assists right now, you dumb fuck. Oh, man, like, this is painfully stupid. This is like receipt upon receipt upon receipt of stupid after stupid after stupid. And this man is one of the most, is the most respected collegiate women's basketball coach in the history of the game. Maybe next to Pat Summit. If you think Pat Summit's more, fine. But he's there. He's got the most championships in women's college basketball history. All right. And not that Sue had the, the physicality to play in that league, but obviously she's the best point guard ever. Sue Bird, best point guard ever. The best point guard ever, by the way, she's 5'9", 150. She's smaller than Caitlin Clark. So she had enough physicality to play. Apparently, I don't fucking know. I mean, Diana Taurasi was the Olympic team as a rookie. Remember that. But Sue Bird, the best point guard ever, has not did not ever, not one time in her career, average eight assists. Her highest season for assists in her entire career was 7.1. Her career... 5.6 assists per game. The greatest point guard ever. I will tell you right now that Caitlin Clark is already better than her. She's already better than her. And I know that Sue Bird won WNBA championships. No question about it. Sue Bird, absolutely a great, great player on great, great teams. Let's not act like she did not play on great teams. She never averaged more than 14.4 points per game. I'm sorry, 14.7 in 2011. Never more than 7.1 assists. One time in her career was she over seven assists. Career 5.6, career 2.5 rebounds. I don't want to hear it. Caitlin Clark is better than her right now. And I know it sucks and it burns you, Gino. It burns you that all these superstars 
at a college that you put in the league, none of them had the fanfare that Caitlin Clark has. None of them had the cachet, the clout, the following, the cult-like following that Caitlin Clark has. And it pisses you off. It pisses you off. You're so bothered that it wasn't one of your players that's doing this. And that is sad because you're supposed to be a teacher, an elevator of these players. All of them. Not just your own. All of them. This one included who wanted to play for you that you did not recruit. Maybe if you'd recruited her, you'd have won a national championship in the last two years. Because I can tell you this, she took teams that were nowhere near as talented as yours to -to back-to-back national championship games with far less talent around her than what Paige has around her. I know Paige didn't play the year before, but the team overall, far more talent. Far more talent. And it burns you like it burns nothing else. And the reality is you're probably never going to win another another national championship because Don Staley has surpassed you as the preeminent coach and premier coach in college, women's college basketball. And now she's the one getting all the dogs who are ranked in the top 10, top 20. McDonald's All-American roster from 1 to 12, national players of the year. She's the one getting those girls. You're getting some, but she's getting more of them. And she's getting bigger ones like Camila Cardoso. And she's getting the Aaliyah Bostons. She's getting those, she's getting the Asia Wilsons. And yet none of those women are translating the fanfare from college to the WNBA. It's this one particular player who can shoot from the parking lot of which no one else can do. And I understand field goal percentages. Caitlin Clark's three-point shooting percentage is not the greatest this year. It's below where it needs to be. She's not taking line-kissing threes. She's taking 28-footers primarily. She's being double-teamed primarily. She used to, especially early on, she's taking the shots that she could get. I expect her three-point shooting to go way up next season. But she's killing the league, bro. And your little soliloquy here and your little hot take shit you did there where you wanted to take a dump on Caitlin Clark, fucking embarrassing because you were wrong 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 and wrong homie so wrong and it sucks for you because these things are all recorded just like social media my guy considering the fact that one of the greatest college basketball coaches if not the greatest of all time is sitting here taking a dump on her i don't know man Gino Arima on Caitlin Clark in June. She's on the wrong team. She has the wrong skill set to handle WMB. She's not quick enough to get away from the physical W. She's not a distributor like Paige. Leads the league in assists. More assists than Paige has ever had in college. Led the country in assists in college. More assists than Diana. More assists than Sue Bird. Man, you are so damn wrong. You've been wrong about her since she was in high school, my guy. But let me know your thoughts, people. I know this is a lengthy rant because this was some bullshit. Bullshit. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a like, comment, follow, subscribe, hit that bell. But I want to know what you got to think. Come on now. <laughs>